This week on Coyote Country, join us as good friend Kale Hout and I venture into the remote northeastern portion of Alberta during a dead of winter in search of the ginormous and majestic wood bison that roam the boreal forest. A ton of preparation and planning went into this remote wilderness adventure, including a 70 kilometer one-way ride with snowmobiles and all our gear in tow for the week-long hunt. Combined with the fact that wild bison hunts are quite rare in Alberta, made the getting up and close with these Tatankas of the North very personal. We hope this is an episode that you'll really enjoy. Hi there and welcome to Coyote Country. This week good friend Kale and I have a unique hunt to share with you as we embark on a wild bison hunt in northeastern Alberta. Now I should mention that over the years I've had the good fortune being on several successful bison hunts and each one of those hunts was certainly an adventure. There was my first bison ever with my good friend Justin. There was the hunt where we made a double header bison kill. The hunt where fellow teammate Mitch Visser harvested this bison. And then there was this group effort hunt where we harvested this bison in 40 degrees Celsius temperature. But at the end of the day, all those hunts made for some lasting memories. The only regret I had was none of those adventures was ever captured on video. And so the mission was set. We were heading out on snowmobile to video a wild bison hunt. So Kale, are you ready for your first bison hunt? <laughs> it's going to be an adventure. Yeah, we're here for about five days. And it's a balmy 29 degrees Celsius this morning, but uh, we still <laughs> were able to get things all loaded up, warmed up, and uh, put on our, our cold winter gear. Once we get out there, we just got to set up the wall tent and cut some firewood. And then uh, maybe if we're lucky, we'll be able to do some scouting this afternoon. But one thing's for certain, we definitely want to get this cold skidoo ride out of the way. <laughs> yeah, you betcha. But hopefully the next time you see us, we'll be in a nice, cozy, warm wall tent. Well, we got camp set up here last night just got it in in the nick of time here before dark but uh, here's what it all looks like Put the wall pan smoking away warming up the sleds and getting ready for this morning's hunt feels like it's about minus 25 or so so we're gonna have to bushwhack a trail and see if we can find some bison. Just waiting for Kale to catch up here, but uh, we finally reached our destination. We've reached what we call the bison paddocks. Basically, it's an area full of cattails and sedges. 
with willows on the edge. And the bison seem to like this area. This creek goes on for a few miles, so as soon as kale catch up, we're gonna go for a ride and see if we can see any sign. And hopefully be able to show you a bison or two. Well, it's day two of our little adventure here. Um, Leo promised me I'll throw all the bushwhacking and and uh, trail making we've done that we'd find bison and well, we uh, looks like we've got on some sign here. So we're gonna uh, kind of get the pack more at the ready and have the rifle out just in case and see if we can track one of these big guys down. I know they came out of the bush here and fed here. Went off this way. Looks like two or three. Definitely bison scat. We've been feeding here for a while. Start wearing my pack again so it's at the ready. You want to tell the people what you're using today? Your little pea shooter? Yeah, we can show everybody. I'm shooting a uh, 416 Ruger. Um, it's meant to go on safari with me, but I thought, well, it needs a needs some practice. So I thought this was a perfect animal to give it a try on. We'll uh, see what a 400 grain Barnes bullet does. 400 grains. Hey, yay, yay. That's like twice my uh, 300 <laughs> win. <laughs> Pretty much, yep. Oh, yeah. well, can't wait to see you put a smack down with that. Oh. Me too. <laughs> right on. Just wrapping up day two here, just trying to get our gear dried out and uh, stay warm by the stove. We're all fed up. Um, had a good day, found some uh, lots of sign, so I'm hoping we'll uh, maybe connect with something tomorrow here once we're warm and dried out. So, good night all. Good morning. It's the uh, start of day three. Got all our gear packed up here. We had uh, quite a breezy night, so we're gonna see what that's gonna do for the bison, if they're still gonna be in the area we found them. Um, we're geared up, ready to go. Let's go see if we can find them. Day three, we're out touring a boat. Uh, found some sign at least. Um, we're about, I'd say, probably a day late, but hey, uh, some sign is better than no sign, so we're gonna see if there's any way we can follow this up or uh, keep looking for some more, but it's, uh, it's a good omen, for sure. Looks like they've been feeding here a bit too, eh? Yeah, I'd say they, they seem to really like this kind of this reed kind of sedgy grass down here in the creek bottom. They're really tearing it up. So we'll try and key in on some more areas like that here later today. We're uh, still on day three here. We got on some more sign. Um, as you can see down here, it's uh, by far the freshest we've found. We figure they're not more than hopefully a couple hours ahead of us. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and put on the snowshoes if needed and follow them out here and see if we can track one down. Okay, so we just come around the corner here, and we've already come up on a couple of bison. We're going to try and sneak up another hundred yards or so. Make sure we can get close enough range for a big girl to do her job here. Now, as Kale is sneaking up to the bison, what you can't tell from this angle is that about 20 yards up ahead of Kale are some willows. It's around that corner of willows where the other half of the bison herd were, which happened to be where all the bigger bison were bedded. Now as a cameraman, I hate splitting apart from the shooter. Yes, there are times you have to, and it can work, but all too often when you split up, it's hard to communicate on what's going on. With this many animals, it's critical for me to ensure that I have the right bison on camera to capture the much anticipated kill shot. Now, it's never good when a bison snaps its head and looks in your direction. 
Unfortunately for us, by this time the herd was mostly standing. Some were still bedded, but they were starting to get very fidgety and it was obvious we were on their radar. Kale took this as cue and was quickly getting ready to settle in for a shot on the far left bison. Now of course from my angle I could see a much larger bison on the edge of the willows and was trying to communicate this to Kale through whispering and hand signals. But because we were split up and too far apart from each other we couldn't make it happen and well it just got worse from there. Well we uh, put a stock in on uh few bison there as we got closer we realized there was actually close to 20 of them. Um, we got within shooting distance and we kind of got started getting set up and unfortunately Leo and I got a little bit too far apart we couldn't quite communicate on uh, which one we were gonna take. Um, we tried to make an effort to get each other a little closer together and at that point we got we got made so they uh, they headed off. Another coyote country epic day Five for five on the stands, and seven dogs down. Don't go away, more action coming your way. Join Coyote Country on Facebook for live updates, or check us out at coyotecountry.ca. Tried to make an effort to get each other a little closer together, and at that point we got, we got made, so they, uh, they headed off. Um, we've decided we're not gonna go after them again today. We're not gonna push them anymore. We're gonna call her a day and uh, pick up the track in the morning and hopefully we can get back on them. There is no denying a sense of frustration. You heard it and saw it on Kale's face. What hurt the most, besides working so hard trying to find these bison, was that we were well within shooting distance. We were at 135 yards trying to get to 125 yards. I guess hindsight is always 2020, but our biggest fear was if we were gonna ever see this herd of bison again. Now unfortunately, I didn't capture the bison running away as I had tucked the tripod under my arm with the camera and I was crawling through the snow trying to get closer to Kale when the bison spooked off. Day four here, we're just kind of getting some breakfast in us, some oatmeal and making tea and uh, I got to start out with my good luck tea. It's uh, Tatanka tea and it says it's good for making morning thunder so if that's not a good omen for getting us a bison today, I don't know what is. So uh, stick with us here and we'll see what, uh, what we can make happen today. We're uh, all packed up, with sleigh loaded, uh, machines are warmed up. We're going to uh, throw on our packs and uh, head on out of here and see if we can find those bison we were on yesterday. We're hoping to be there by first light and we've got about 45 minutes to snow machine in there. So we're going to get to her. Okay, we've uh, made it into uh, where we lost sight of the bison yesterday. Um, we're about a half hour after sunrise. We made good time getting in here. Uh, we're all geared down and loaded up with what we do need. And uh, we're gonna hike on them for a couple hours, see if we can uh, catch up to them again. Hopefully they bedded down and we got them. All right, so we've been uh, following these guys for, I don't know, about a mile, mile and a half now. Um, we're went through some pretty nasty stuff. The, these bison are pretty much like a bulldozer. They just put their heads down and go. It doesn't matter where. They go right through it. Thankfully, we uh, kind of found where they bedded up for the night. Um, you can see I'm kind of standing in one here. So, we got lots of daylight left. Hopefully that means we're going uh, to be crossing paths with them here soon. So, keep with us. We'll see what happens. Looking back, it was actually quite comical because as we were walking through the treed area trying to locate these bison, these bison were probably no more than a few hundred yards away from us, going in the opposite direction, back to their feeding area. All right, we've uh, been following for about another hour now. We're on a really fresh line, like they cannot be far ahead of us. So we're gonna go ahead and get a little more prepared here. We could stumble across them at any point. So I'm gonna get the gun out and be ready to roll. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Now, thankfully, we never bumped into the bison as we were sneaking along through the forested area. And finally, up ahead, we could see an open meadow, and we knew we were closing a gap on these bison. What a feeling of relief it was to hear Kale say, there they were. Now, the next thing to do as these bison were feeding contently was to try to move in closer in the crunchy snow and set Kale up for the shot. What a sigh of relief it was to have these bison up close again and watching how they used their heads like a plow to clear the deep snow to get to the feed. Now again, what you don't know here is that the wind was slightly courting towards the bison. Kale and I were quickly trying to formulate a plan when I looked into the viewfinder of the camera and saw this cow lift her nose in the air and check the wind. That could only mean one thing, we've been just had. The swirling wind had just bit us in the rear and the cow lifted her nose one more time in the air to reassure herself of what she just smelt and it was all starting to look deja vu again and the thought it was going to be game over. Let's hope that went well. Which one did you shoot? Very back one there. Oh, I saw him hump up. I saw him hump up. <laughs> well, here's what the bison were feeding this morning and way off yonder. What is that, Kale? That looks like success to me. Wow, that's, that's a big critter. I'm uh, super happy about this. We, uh, we definitely earned this one today. We uh, made a big circle through some pretty nasty country. And snow up to, well, up to my knees anyway. Maybe not the rest of people's, but uh, <laughs> It was an adventure when we said that's what we were gonna do. That's uh, that's what we've had. So I want to thank Leo. This was awesome for taking me along. I'm super pumped. Well, finally it all came together here. I think Kale was probably having some doubts with me uh, as we were tracking this uh, group of bison. We figured there was what 20. Yeah, there's had to have been 20. It was pretty hard to count when they were going in every direction, but yeah, it was a bigger herd than we actually expected. We followed them for one mile in the bush and then we found where they were bedded. And then when they got up, they came straight back out and made a horseshoe. So we got our exercise for sure. Yeah, yeah, we earned this one. I'm I'm super happy. This has been, uh, there's only one way to describe it. It is, it was an adventure. So I want to, <laughs> uh, I want to thank Leo. Hey, no problem, man. That was, uh, that was awesome. Anybody who can uh, keep up with uh, my big long steps in the snow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, makes it in my books for sure. But the adventure's not over yet, eh? No, we got a lot of work ahead of us. <laughs> we still gotta get back to our snow machines first. Yeah, Maybe still... some lunch? Yeah, lunch, yeah. sure, sure. Taking out the tools of the trade. And the work begins. We got about three hours before dark, so we better get going, eh? Put the camera away. If we get lucky, we might be able to video us out Even. on the machine. Yeah, just before dark. There's some pretty cool trails, but we'll see if we can do it. Well, we're uh, we're getting there. We got a lot of work ahead of us, but. Uh, it's coming along when you got two guys and one especially that uh, has done this before. It uh, makes the work a lot easier. It's a big animal. And, uh, we're going to keep at her before the snow sets in any worse than it is and hopefully we'll be out of here before dark. <laughs> Alright, we got everything all, uh, all done up and in the sleigh. Uh, it's just time to kind of pack up our gear and try and make her out of here before it gets completely dark. See, we got quite a sleigh full. It's going uh, to be a good haul. I'm pretty impressed.
With a load of precious cargo, we slowly made the long and windy trek through the dark with our snowmobiles and finally made it back to camp for a good night's sleep in the warm, cozy wall tent. As next morning meant, it was time to pack up camp and load up what seemed like the never-ending pile of gear and strategically place them into the sleighs while making sure that the straps were good and tight for the long trail ride back to the truck. Our hunt has come to an end. And I think Kale can agree it was quite the uh, quite the adventure, eh? Yeah, absolutely. No, this has been a been a blast. What about uh, tracking those bison back in the bush where probably nobody's ever stepped foot before? That's a pretty neat feeling, you know. And it's uh, it's it's true hunting. I mean, we got to battle elements and uh, you know what supplies we have, and then outsmart those critters too. So yeah, it's yeah. it was an awesome hunt. They're quite the majestic animal, for sure. Absolutely. Well, we should uh, start up the machines here. I think we're about as ready as we're going to be. We'll see you next time on Coyote Country. Coyote Country was proudly presented by CR Backwoods. Let's follow Coyote Country team member Leo, his brother Cyril, and their good friends Scott and Tracy as they try their luck on some southern Alberta coyotes that we refer to as prairie ghosts.